to the Swan. Sanderlands is a goal. The big guy can do it all. That is fantastic football. Go back to Sanderlands. Take it. It's live. Terrific mark. Conjures one from nowhere. And they'll come from everywhere. Our next guest is in unbelievable form. Before we go to Aaron Sandlin's breaking news out of Windy Hill, Maddie Knight is going to be talking about Tate Pears. Huge story coming up, so make sure you stick with us on that. Aaron Sandlin's welcome to Game Day. Thanks for having me. Last year, six wins. Three were in a row, so it was a uh, long time in between the wins for the other three. You've won nine after 13 rounds. Where's the improvement come from? Youth? Uh, definitely youth. I think um, you know we had a fair few injuries last year, and uh, which gave a lot of game time to a lot of our younger players, and I think that's starting to show this year. We were having a look uh, last night. I think there were 11 guys that played under 50 games for you guys, five 2010 debutants who were flying, and this is a really exciting young list. Yeah, it's it's good to see the young players playing consistent and playing well for us, uh, whether it's at home or away. So it's it's been nice to be able to win on the road this year. Now we've called this little graphic "Big Man, Big Numbers" because. You are dominating in two areas. Hit outs, you own the place, forget everyone else, you're just taking care of business. And then contested possessions, where a lot of people don't think you're dominating, you're eighth in the AFL over the last three years. You were uh, very conscious of that, I assume? No, not at all, mate, to be <laughs> honest. So, yeah, good to see. Carlton versus Fremantle last night. It was uh, two losses in a row for the Blues. It was going to be three losses for the Dockers if they didn't turn things around, but they were terrific last night. Betts' four goals probably flattering. They are all in the last quarter. They were very quiet. Goalless in the first term, the Blues. One goal, 11 at, point, the blue, at one point, the Blues, but Frio out to about six goals at one point, Robbo. Your game takes through. Thank you, Bill. Sandlin's a bail over the best two players in the ground, but it was a real team effort from female, uh, from Fremantle. <laughs> Monday got on my way to a good start. They were just in control throughout. Carlton couldn't get to them. This is one of Barlow's four goals, and we'll talk to Aaron Sanderlands about that, him in a second. Morabito, not getting a great deal of the ball, but what he does, when he does get it, he does it with polish, and there's the dominance there. Simpson and Brett Thornton had a bit of a fight after that. That was the best thing Thornton had done in his career, according to Robert Walls. But they got back into the game a little bit, Carlton, but they were coming from too far behind. And as we know, if you get too far back, you spend a lot of tickets to get back into the game. Fremantle were just very solid. They were very professional. They worked very well in the back half together. This is Stephen Hill pretending he's Buddy Franklin, except he didn't kick the goal. He gave it off to another young player, Nathan Fyth. He's going to be very good. Fremantle are now... Not entrenched in the four, but they just well, well and truly deserve their spot in the four. I learned a few things last night, uh, Hamish, at this game. Just give um, us your top three. <laughs> uh, I'll give you my top three. The top three is at Fremantle. I do think they're going to finish top four. They, they deserve it in the event that Jared Waite, he's too tough for his own good, Jared Waite. He, he, got, he may get reported. It's third time or third instant this year where he may come under scrutiny. He's been out before twice. And Mar Michael Barlow... This would be one of the greatest stories in football if this guy could win the Brownlow medal. He's had a, just a ripping start to his career, Hamish. He would, as I said, between uh, him and Aaron last night, I think were the most influential two players on the ground. He's just got balance. He hasn't got a lot of pace. He's just got footy smarts, Michael Barlow. And in today's footy, with cluster and players around, he just thinks his way through a game of footy. How has he been missed? And how well did you do? Brad Lloyd, who's the recruiting manager, to get him. Yeah, it's amazing that someone at the age of 22 can uh, can slip through the system and and come out to a side and, and just dominate uh, games of football. So it's it's been a really good prick up by Brad. Two graphics we're going to show you. First of all, the Brownlow odds updated as per this morning. Michael Barlow is suddenly second mm. favourite for the Brownlow medal. In third, you'd like to look at that, wouldn't you, Aaron? <laughs> Ten dollars. Have a look at it. You've got Brownlow medalist, an unbelievable debutant, all Australian ruckman and best and fairest for the Dockers, Norm Smith medalist, number one draft pick, Brownlow medalist, freak for the pies, Brownlow medalist, Brownlow medalist, and one of the great midfielders of all time for the Saints. It's a pretty impressive list. Well, you'd hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's surprising. But what, what I'm saying is, form lines right yeah. now well, all holding up. I think what it does say is it's, it puts Michael Barlow in right at the top echelon of the uh, Jets in the AFL. Have a look at this for a debut season. This is first 12 games, Robbo. Have a look at these names. Most disposals in first 12 games. Barlow leads an unbelievable list. Greg Williams, Craig Bradley, Chris McDermott, Andrew Jarman. And Greg Broughton's company. In, Greg Broughton's in there. And I was just saying, how far, he's, he's back in a couple of weeks. So they're going OK. For a man, they go home, have the break. It's, and it's not, just the, uh, what about, not just the disposals, it's the quality of them, the goals as well. Yes. Because goal-kicking midfielders, are, they're really valuable. Blues in trouble. Frio, fantastic. Chris Judd last night, 
on the pav. You've got a theory on this that I want to talk about. And then there was uh, Jared Wade on Duffy. Look at that. Look at that. He, he's opened up. He's opened up um, Pavlich's uh, cheekbone. There's Jared Wade taking out Paul Dufford. I think there's going to be two incidents. Look at that. To me, that's mm. too far off the ball. The, uh, the AFL doesn't like that. Jared Wade. It would be the third time he's been suspended this year, and it's just not good mm. enough. It simply is not. It'll be interesting with Judd and, Judd and Pav. I want to get on to also Adam McPhee playing on um, Chris Judd last night. Obviously, before the game, well planned that McPhee's going to run with Judd. He niggled him all, all night, Aaron. Rate, rate his performance, can you? McPhee's performance. I reckon uh, Adam's, Adam's been really good for us this year. He's, uh, he's played a fair bit up forward and uh, his uh, pressure and tackling in the forward 50 has been great. But he did a, uh, a job on, on Judd last night and, and got into him and, and did it pretty well. Did the rest of the team get into Judd or did you all leave it just to McPhee? Did you, did you have a few words? Look, I think if you guys tried to help him out, I think it's a, a big job uh, leaving one guy to play on the calibre of someone like Chris Judd. So, um, you know, it was, it was a team effort, but more so uh, the job from Adam. Odd quick. The teammate that spends the most time in front of the mirror is, without a doubt, Ryan Crowley. Definitely Ryan Crowley. Ryan Crowley. It's all he's checking up on himself. Probably Ryan Crowley. That is definitely Ryan Crowley. <laughs> I can't believe that. They would have set that up, so they all said round round. Ryan Crowley. <laughs> Ryan Crowley. Probably Ryan Crowley. Um, all right, uh, I'll have a quick think. Just have to look at the amount of moisturiser he has in his locker. His <laughs> toiletry bag is about as big as my backpack, so without question, Ryan Crowley. Loves doing his hair, hair dryer, everything like that. Who's the most vain guy at the Fremantle Football Club? Ryan Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> Big uh, news for you, you've got a uh, marriage coming up. Yeah, yeah, uh, end of the footy season. Name, Jenny? Yeah, Hofsink. Becomes a Sandlands? Well, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got her covered hot wise, which is nice. Anyway, what do you want to do after football? I understand that you've lost a toe doing a lawn mowing round. That's the future for you, lawn mowing. It is every chance, yeah. I really enjoy the outdoors and uh, the old man's got a long run around, so I uh, did that for four or five years before footy took off. Not the ride on? Did you get the ride on? Uh, yeah, he has got a ride on now, but he got that when I left, so <laughs> I, yeah, he always had me pushing it. We've seen Tiger Woods knocking golf balls off the top of that thing in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, wherever it is. Uh, this is you boys. This is the Pav and, uh, and yourself. How long ago was this and where was it? Uh, this was uh, pre-season, so up in the Goodwin, um, you know, Woodside, Woodside are one of our major sponsors, so we were fortunate enough to be able to go up and spend the day on a platform, which was a great experience. Did you lose any insurance that day? Just sort of, you'd be well, tempted to sort of launch one, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, we weren't supposed to launch one off into the water, and it took that long for it to hit the water. It wasn't, was, wasn't funny. It was so, a long way down. Come on, Tommy, there's dolphins out there, mate. There's marine life. We something, can't be putting in there. No, there was something, there was something <laughs> down the bottom. I was to pick the balls up and put it back in there. <laughs> Tell me, the story going around, Hayden Ballantyne got fined $900 for pulling Harry O'Brien's hair. You boys had a laugh about it and thought it's not really going to affect him too much because there's a story circulating that his grandmother won the Tats Lotto mm. and gave him a million dollars. Yeah, well, I don't know how much truth in that, but uh, I, th I thought it was two. Two million? Yeah, so he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the story is right. Yeah, his grandma uh, did win Lotto, so I'm not too sure how much he received, but um, That's a $900 won't hurt him. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Aaron, quick hands. Very simple Ooh. question, very quick answer. You play Dream Team. Who have you got as your Ruckman? Uh, Brad Alton's and Nick Natanui. Mm. Serious question. Do you fly business class for interstate trips? Uh, every now and then, but always generally get exit row. Yeah. Uh, just with your Dream Team, when you play West Coast, is it true you put Natanui on the bench? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He told you that. Just find things out, mate. You've been named the, the Fremantle player most likely to go into politics, not lawn mowing. Will you go into politics? Oh, I've been... Yeah. Mate, uh, finished school end of year 10, so I don't think there's very much chance of me being in politics. No, that was true. a bad question then, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll kill him. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Well done last night. Yeah. No. <laughs> you got me on the politics. <laughs> no, it was, uh, uh, that's it was... what I've been told to say. Oh, we'll, we'll do some checking on that. Don't want to get into politics. No, You'll I, be think good. I think I'll pass. Yeah. All right. Good luck for the rest of the season. Hope to see you playing finals football. Thanks, guys. Good job. Aaron Sandlin is joining us on Game Day.